Thanks for coming back uh, for the new people. Thank you for giving us a shout. Um, thank you for coming in the rain. First years who thought that they had escaped Chicago's infamous winter. Uh, it's not over yet, so <laughs> hold on. All right, so uh, we have eight presenters, 15 minutes break in the middle, or a little bit more than that. Uh, we will be closing the bar during presentations out of respect for the presenters. Um, also, after every presenter, there will be a few minutes for questions. So think of them while, uh, while you're listening. And up first, we have Joan. So to come to terms with, and I didn't realize that until I saw that video. 
Um, so then I had to face the reality that I was no longer a dancer. It was not anywhere near the top of my priority list. And I kept making excuses saying that I was busy, that I would make it to a dance class or um, a dance group if I had time. But to be honest, it just wasn't something I prioritized. Otherwise, I would have found time for it. So if I'm no longer a dancer, then who am I? Um, this was a question that I started asking myself, and I didn't realize how much I relied on my identity as a dancer in, throughout life, just uh, like in biographies and introductions and interesting facts about yourself, I would talk about dance. Um, it was my clutch. So to, to answer that now, um, I, I'm still looking for the answer, but what I know is that I'm more than just a dancer at this point. I am mainly a policy student. I'm a UV programmer. I'm a, a sister, a partner, a dancer, a friend. Um, I'm a bunch of things put into a word club. <laughs> and I also realized that there's, more, there, there's really no need to define myself with one thing. I think um, since I was young, I felt the need to stand out and to be special and to define it, yourself as something more than just a basic girl. Um, so I define myself as a dancer. But in reality, I think we are, our identity is so much more than just that one thing. Um, it's really a swirl of colors that makes you yourself, and that's your values, your, um, your future aspirations, uh, the accumulation of your previous experiences. Um, so that's what I'm trying to figure out right now in grad school. And as far as the gaps that dance has left, in my life, um, I filled it with yoga, with running, with doing some obstacle races like Tough Mudder and Spartan Race, and once in a while going out and um, being a dance master on the <laughs> dance floor. And I, I do still dance sometimes. You guys might recognize that's the dance room of the Ratner Gym here. And it's a really cathartic thing for me to do. So, for example, last November after the election, I was feeling weird, uncertain, stressed out, not really sure of how to deal with myself. So I went to this room and I just kind of let it out and it was this great experience and I do it once in a while. Um, and there are still remnants of my previous life as a dancer here um, today. So if I'm ever daydreaming in class, I'm probably choreographing in my head. Um, and if I'm standing around waiting and bored, sometimes I like, go into fifth position and go on relevant. Um, so if you ever catch me walking around with my headphones on, looking like I don't want to talk to anybody, and looking like I'm in the zone, it's probably because I'm listening to a really good song and choreographing in my head and just like, living it in, inside. So I'm sorry if I look like I'm not social. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 
Isabella. Anything else? Is there something that makes it feel similar to when you're dancing? Um, running has done that recently. Um, so when I was talking about the cathartic experience of freestyling on my own in the room, like dancing like no one's watching, um, I feel that when I run and get runners high, it's like this tingling feeling inside. And I, I don't know the science of it, but I, I did run, I did train for marathons and half marathons for a while, so I was running a lot, and I would get a similar feeling. <coughs> I was wondering if you were interested in cultural policy, which is like the kind of intersection between what you did before and now. It's it's like the study of how we of, of how the government supports the arts and culture, and I, I mean I think it's a kind of a, a discipline that really combines your background. You know? I don't know much about it to be honest, and but I do know that I have friends who were dancers before who are now start or aspiring to start nonprofits that teaches dance as a form of expression for a lot of communities and things like that. So I, I would be open to it if you want to talk about it. Absolutely. <laughs> Is there one more? Uh, what are a couple songs that are your go-to songs? Okay. Um, John Mayer, Slow Dancing in a Burning Room. <laughs> um, so, so that's the contemporary side, but the, the hip-hop side, um, do you know the song Out of Your Mind by Lil Jon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I secretly really, really love that song and I've always wanted to do a hip-hop piece to it, but I'm not, that's not my uh, strength, hip-hop is it, so I would need someone to choreograph it, but if anyone wants to do that, I'd be willing to participate. <laughs> Um, not really. I kind of just browse YouTube concept videos. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't have a favorite person I follow. Thanks, guys. <laughs>